know that dude, my man. Eddie is the dude that put me on. I didn't know that. And Eddie Griffin put me on. I tell me this Eddie, story. Eddie Griffin. I was at the comedy club. You know what I'm saying? And he he got me um and put me in my first movie. Yeah, we on Boss Talk one on one. Yeah, we gonna talk. You know, at the end of the day. You know what I'm saying? Um, like Eddie Griffin the same way. Eddie bad. You know? God, I love that dude. Man, me and Eddie be on the phone. Bro, I love that dude, you know, man. Eddie is the dude that put me on. I didn't know that. Yeah, Eddie Griffin put me on. I ain't, Tell me the story. Eddie Griffin, I was at the comedy club. You know what I'm saying? And he, he got me um and put me in my first movie, which was a uh, um, um, Master P movie. Yeah. Uh, Eddie did that. Yeah, he put me in. It was a... Um, I forgot to, it was Eddie Mo Eddie Eddie. I got the hookup, not hookup. Not nah, that. I put me. I got the Matt put me. In, I got the hookup too. But he put me in another movie called No Limit Soldiers. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He put me in that movie, even though my scene got cut out. He put you in it. <laughs> yeah, he put me in it though. You know, I That's was hard. Sad. But then he took your first dude, put me on tour. You know, he put me on tour with him, and I was an amateur. He put me on tour, and I was a roadie, so I carried the bags every once in a while. He let me get on stage, and um, taught me the etiquette, and you know etiquette. But he didn't really have etiquette because he got kicked out of more clubs than me. You know what I mean? But, but I, I don't, <laughs> Eddie was Eddie was Eddie like, dope, bro. Like how yeah. how dope was it? And did you understand? Can't who, nobody fuck was he Eddie who he thing. was at yeah, the time? He's still who he is. The nigga having age, the nigga still, you know, nigga got a deep level for. Philosophy, theology, no, he spirituality. Bad. He bad. You know what I'm saying? He really ain't to be fucked with. Man, you know? shout out to Hulk Comedian. They called me the other day. He, Hulk told me, man, we coming to Texas. I think Austin or something. He was just trying to get me to come through, man. Yeah. Just, just, just to rock out with him. Yeah. I love man, I love them, bro. Yeah. Like when they come to town, I know because Hulk, Hulk the, the comedian, Hulk, yeah, yeah, he yeah. going to call me. He going to be yeah. like, Boss Talk. If Eddie don't come, I'm coming. You know, yeah, Eddie, He's like, Eddie don't do a lot of interviews, but I'm coming to Boss Talk, man. Eddie, <laughs> Eddie, Eddie, man, I'm telling you, man, you know, it's like um, man, I fuck with all the real. You have ones. to catch him is what I'm. I'm thinking on Eddie because he be he be focused on he, when you get older, bro. The yeah. you know, yeah. you don't a lot of things you don't value the same no more because yeah. you've done it so long. Uh -huh. I'm being real. Yeah. You, you don't look at things like everybody else, and I get it because yeah. I don't. Like I'm not nowhere as near as raw as Eddie. You know, that nigga I mean? raw man. He 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 raw. Bro, when he left, it was like dust was left. That nigga. Yeah, Eddie don't leave nothing on the man, table. Man, them niggas was in that man. I t they talked about that the next day. And t when this nigga got yeah. through at the improv, yeah. I was at the show and Eddie, I heard some niggas Eddie, hurt Eddie, behind Eddie, that. Eddie, Eddie start off with laughs that he that did in your soul. Damn, he talked to people in that thing. I ain't never seen nothing like it in my life, and I'm going back as soon as I can. Yeah, he raw. <laughs> he raw. He's like, you know, it's some some cats I just admire, man, and you know, and some of my favorite comedians, you know, rather it's Eddie Griffin, I love Cat, I love Corey Holcomb, you know what I'm saying? Corey Raw, I'm Corey Raw too. Corey Raw, you know, it, it, Corey another level raw, I talk to him all the time. It, you That's know crazy. I mean? How did you like like did you, you I love Reggie Carroll like But you've been around these people for twenty years, right? Yeah. So yep. you built a, a hell of a relationship. Y'all come up together. Yeah. A lot see. of them pass. I'm I know some of the comedians done passed on because when you get thirty five, my OG, my uh mentor, he passed away now. But yeah, you, Ronaldo you is my mentor, he passed away. You see what I'm saying? They start passing and yeah. RP to him, man. Like the the Bernie Bernie Max, man, Bernie the, the, Mac, man, yeah. he do, these dudes dope. I met man. Bernie Mac on the Set of um, he's doing some movie with Ashton Cook. Uh, Ashton, Ashton Kutcher. Kutcher. Damn, yeah, that's the one yeah. where Ashton was gonna be his son. Yeah, and I had. I one, love that movie. What, what's the name of that, baby? I'll be watching it. Who's looking at some shit? Yeah, who's who's Guess coming who? up? Guess who's coming? Guess who? Yeah, yeah. And, I, I, and I never been a groupie in my life, but I felt some type of way when I seen Bernie Mac. So I didn't <laughs> want to just say something because I was so excited. Like real niggas love certain comedians. Yeah, and. But real niggas like Bernie Mac and Richard Pryor, like them, they're the same nigga when it comes to, you know, iconicness. So when I seen Bernie, I, I just tried to just say least as possible, you know what I mean? And I and I and now I say the same thing. You know, my favorite. I said, man, listen, I don't know you personally, but I'm a fan of your body of work, right? And he like, I know who the fuck you is. He knew you. He said, you that nigga run around on BT with all your shirts off, taking your shit off, skating and shit. Nigga, I know who the fuck you is. <laughs> he said, nigga, I got good news and I got bad news. I said, all right. He said, the good news is you gonna make it, but it ain't gonna be no time soon. <laughs> <laughs> 
<laughs> that's yeah, all man. Yeah, yeah. That, you too raw. You too raw, man. My most like niggas like us, you know. That, yeah, he raw like yeah, that too. Hang in there, man. Your turn gonna come. Just wait. Just wait. But you gotta work. You gotta get to it. Yeah, you know. But it's like it's here. You know, I got my own TV show, West wow. Comedy Jam. You know, I didn't know that. Yeah, I got West Comedy Jam coming out um, August. I got my one man show coming back called All I Needed Was a Oh, hug. yeah, you did tell me you was Against filming when story. I came in. Yeah, it was that. the dark side of something. Yeah, it was called. And now I got, I'm doing my one, I'm doing that's the, that was my uh, one man show. Mm -hmm. Now I'm doing my uh, special. It's called Out the Mud. Wow. You know, so, you know, the world would see, you know, because, um, you know, like I pay my dues. And sometimes when you pay your dues, you know, it's only four levels of making in their life. Wow. You know, it's, uh, you know, it's like, uh, first you got to make a decision. See, the devil fuck with you in confusion. It was niggas in the wilderness when they came from, when Egypt, when they came, when Moses rescued them out of Egypt and they went to, went to the wilderness, them niggas stayed there 40 years because they couldn't decide which way to go. Yeah. Just to find out they was right around the corner from Jerusalem. <laughs> That's right. So the devil keep you confused. You That's know what real. I mean? That's real. So you have to make a decision in order for you to go anywhere. So a decision, if you look at it like real estate, decision is like your foundation. Wow. Then once you get that foundation, you got to do the work. You know what I mean? I don't give a fuck. Because the thing about your work, nobody give a fuck about your sweat, your tears, your no. pain, your rejections, your hurt, yeah. Yeah. your let down. Nobody care. Do the work, nigga. And then when you build something, then you have open house. You know what I mean? You, so your third one is hustle. Then you hustle. Look, Jay, look, look. Then when you hustle, then you get to that elite level, then you just negotiate. I gotta ask That's you about it. I gotta ask you about uh Monique. Uh she been doing running doing her thing now. And um uh but but a lot of the women complain about not being compensated. The men, black men, do they be compensated when they on the level that they should be? In, well, these, in these different in movies and all these different sets, or is it a thing? Because you feel like it, when you're on the outside looking in, you signing this paperwork, you doing all of these different avenues, you know what you're getting yourself into, but then later on, you, you guys are complaining. How does this world work where you, you're you not taking accountability of the this, this stuff you signed up for? Well, first of all, you got to understand the, the reason that um, black people get you know, or we lose out so much because we've always thought this was an entertainment business. Okay. But it's a business. It's a business. And not only is it a business, it's not an entertainment business, it's a marketing business. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? So it's not a, because your talent. That makes sense. Yes, your talent have become obsolete. Your talent is not as important as your business. You know what I mean? All you need is a platform which is something to market. You know what I mean? So when it comes to business, you know, white people have been doing business since the beginning of time. You know, niggas, we probably only, you know, five or six generations in. We still learning as we learn. You yeah. know what I mean? So it's a uh, it's a process. So when you don't understand business, it's hard on us because they aim it at our talent. You know what I mean? So, what so you they say, coming for our talent. In retrospect, once a person go through all of this, they look back and they didn't even know they was getting done away. And they no. figure it out and they be like, damn, I got done away. Because you got to remember, a motherfucker that's coming to, remember, it's only two ways in this business you can lose your soul. Through a motherfucker, through a good time, and a motherfucker you trust. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. So, if you don't know business and... You know, and you got an opportunity for your gift to shine. You know what I mean? Come on, homie. You're going to take that opportunity a lot of times. And if you look at it spiritually, you know, your your gift is like, you know, your, your, your gift is your soul. Yeah. You yeah, know what I mean? Yeah. That's your soul. You know what I mean? That's your warehouse. It's where all that, your gift to create it. Now, the Bible said that the battle's in your mind. Mm -hmm. So that's your swagger. That's where you put the, that, you know, you put your, yeah, your yeah, shit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's your swagger. Then it, the, they come and make you that offer. Like, look, nigga, I want to, you know, buy, you know, get your brand. And you thinking, hell yeah, you know, I want to sell it to you. Then you thinking they want your, you know, want your, want your, want your mind. They, but they want your warehouse. Wow. You see what I'm saying? They come yeah. to get your warehouse, not your swagger. Wow. Then once they get that warehouse, you stuck there with that swagger, but you ain't got no way to create. That's why you see mother. Still got their swagger. You're like, why that nigga not funny no more? Why the boy can't do that no more? Because they stuck with that swagger, but they ain't got no warehouse. Mm. Wow. 
You see what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah. You got to hold on to your warehouse. Because once you get all the things that you sold your warehouse for, you know, that shit ain't worth nothing. What does man to gain the whole world lose his soul? That man, God, you can tell you've been, you've been reading. Yeah, we on Boss Talk 101. 101. Yeah, we going to talk.